Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in our next series of video lecture. Currently we are running a course on design of three phase induction motor. In today's lecture we will study design of square cage uh, uh, rotor and especially we will study today design of rotor bar and design of end ring. In previous lecture, we have studied how to select number of rotor slots. In today's lecture, we will study about uh, rotor bar design and design of end ring. But before we start uh, our uh, designing part, uh, let us uh, revise the construction of the square cage rotor. In case of square cage rotor, we have a rotor core as shown in the figure. Rotor core is made of uh, laminated stampings to reduce the iron losses. And at the outer periphery of the rotor core, slots are provided and in the slots, we need to house our uh, uh, rotor winding. And in case of square cage induction motor, we know that rotor winding is made of uh, rotor bars. So rotors, uh, rotor bars, mostly it is made of copper and that is uh, housed in the outer periphery, uh, the slots provided at the outer periphery. So the combination is something uh, as shown in the figure. And uh, all the rotor bars are short circuited with the end rings on the both the side. So it is a short circuited uh, uh, rotor winding. There is no insulation provided in between a rotor bar and uh, uh, slots. So this is the construction of the square cage rotor. Now in today's lecture our objective is to decide the rotor bar area as well as design dimension of end ring. Number of rotor bars that is exactly equal to the number of rotor slots that is very clear uh, from the figure and shape of the rotor bar normally it takes shape as per the slots. So let us start uh, now design of rotor bar. So first we have to calculate how much amount of current is passing through the rotor bar and based on that uh, amount of current we can able to calculate area of rotor bar. So let us take a rotor bar current. For three phase winding the rotor bar current is uh, given by the equation that is uh, six times Is that is uh, stator current per phase, Ts that is uh, turns, stator turns per phase and divided by number of rotor slots. It is also multiplied by winding factor of the stator and multiplied by power factor. If we simplify the equation then uh, it can be written as uh, 0.85. It is considered for uh, stator winding factor as well as power factor. The simple meaning of this equation is that uh, a rotor EMF, MMF required that is 0.85 times the MMF required for the stator. The rotor bar current is uh, very easy to calculate from the same equation and all the quantities are known where uh, IB that is a rotor bar current, IS that is a stator current per phase, TS that is stator turns per phase, SR that is number of rotor slots and KWS that is stator winding factor. So based on this equation we can easily calculate rotor bar current. Once the rotor bar current is available, then it is very easy to calculate area of the rotor bar. So to calculate area of the rotor bar, we can take uh, 
this equation area is uh, current divided by current density then we can have cross sectional area of the rotor bar in case of square cage induction motor here we have to calculate the rotor bar keeping rotor resistance in mind in case of three phase induction motor the performance of the motor is broadly based on the resistance of the rotor if we take a higher resistance then obviously starting torque will be more but at the same time rotor resistance uh, because of rotor high resistance copper losses will be more and efficiency will be poor at the same time if we take a lower resistance in case of rotor winding then starting torque will be poor but rotor losses will be less and efficiency will be higher so we have to design keeping in mind both the performance parameters that is starting torque as well as efficiency and uh, resistance depends upon the area of the rotor bar cross sectional area of the rotor bar so as we choose uh, higher uh, 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 rotor area the resistance will be less and if resistance is less then we have higher efficiency and the lower starting torque but if we consider area of the rotor bar as less then resistance will be more and we have higher starting torque but at the same time we have poor efficiency now area of rotor bar is depend mainly on the current density we select and area of the rotor bar is inversely proportional to the current density of the uh, rotor bar so current density we have to select accordingly so the significance of current density in a rotor bar current is very important so ae that is area of each rotor bar and delta e that is current density in the rotor bar normally it is taken as a 4 to 7 ampere per millimeter square so as i said that uh, value of current density is a uh, very significant in deciding the area of the rotor bar and area of the rotor bar is important to uh, prepare a rotor for a higher or lower resistance and uh, resistance of the rotor ultimately decide the performance of the three phase induction motor so this part of designing is very important now let us start uh, design of end ring before we start a design of end ring let us see the structure or construction of the uh, rotor uh, end rings as shown in the figure we have rotor bars and all the rotor bars are short circuited with two end rings at both the side and we have a short circuited uh, rotor winding now current distribution is very important in case of uh, while uh, calculating end ring now again uh, let us start uh, from the very beginning when we apply three phase supply to the stator winding a rotating magnetic field is generated rotating magnetic field will interact with the uh, rotor winding so emf will induce in rotor bars this emf will be sinusoidal in nature over a one pole pitch and because our rotor winding is short circuited current will start to circulate in the rotor bars because induced emf is sinusoidal our current flowing in the rotor bar will also be sinusoidal in nature now the current distribution 
is shown in the circuit diagram or figure we have sinusoidal current over a pole pitch same way we have sinusoidal current in end rings the resistance of end ring is negligible compared to resistance of the rotor bar over a pole pitch current passes through the rotor bars maximum current of the rotor bar passes through the uh, end ring current when bar current is maximum we can see that end ring current will be zero and when current is maximum in end ring we have zero current in the rotor bar over a pole pitch we can see that the current is distributed in both the direction half of the current will pass in one direction and half of the current will pass in the another direction in the end ring this current distribution is very important while calculating current of the end ring same concept is uh, shown in this uh, figure also over a pole pitch so that is a center to center area of the north pole and south pole half of the current is passing in one direction through the end ring and half of the current is passing in the another direction of the end rings so when we have maximum current in the rotor bar zero current in the end rings and when we have zero current in the rotor bar we have maximum current passing through the end rings so this concept is very important while uh, calculating uh, end ring current so we start with the end ring current maximum value of current in the end ring that is uh, ie end ring current and maximum value that is uh, total number of bars per pole we are considering over a pole pitch so bars per pole and multiplied by current per bar we are assuming here that uh, current are equal in all the bars and uh, half of this current we have to take into consideration because as we have seen in distribution that half of the current is passing in one direction and half of the current is passing in the another direction so half of the current multiplied by bars per pole and multiplied by current per bar so this way we can have our maximum current of end ring so if we put in equation form the bars per pole that is uh, exactly equal to the rotor slots per pole so sr that is number of rotor slots and divided by p p is number of pole so one half then bars per pole that is sr divided by p and current per bar that is maximum current that is ib maximum so this way we can have our maximum end ring current but in case of uh, end ring current as well as in bar current we know that it is a sine wave or sinusoidal over a pole pitch so we have to consider average value of sinusoidal signal so our uh, end ring current maximum end ring current will change in another equation that is uh, multiplied by 2 divided by pi so as per the sign of values we have considered this equation now ib that is bar current maximum that is equal to under root 2 times ib where ib is the value of rms current so if we substitute this value for maximum bar okay. so our value of current end ring current maximum will change as per this equation that is 2 by pi multiplied by sr divided by 2p and multiplied by root 2 times ib now value of ib maximum we have replaced with the rms value of uh, ib 
So this way the equation is changed and therefore again if we take a value of uh, entering current as RMS value then it is uh, 1 upon root 2 times uh, IE maximum value. So now let us consider RMS value of the entering current. So IE RMS value that is 1 upon root 2 times and the whole value of IE maximum that is 2 by pi multiplied by SR that is stator, uh, uh, rotor slots divided by 2P and multiplied by root 2 times IB. If we now uh, simplify this equation then it becomes SR divided by pi P and multiplied by IB and this is the value of entering current we have achieved or we have derived and uh, we have RMS value of entering current. So once based on the bar current we have entering current is available. Now after calculating entering current the next step is to calculate area of the entering. Again the rotor resistance is very significant in performance of three fish induction motor that we have already seen. Area of the entering current should be chosen in such a way that uh, resistance of entering current is uh, almost negligibly small compared to resistance of the rotor bar and uh, area of entering current depends or inversely proportional to the current density we provide for the entering current. So cross-sectional area of the entering current that is uh, entering current divided by current density and uh, current density in case of entering current we normally consider 5 to 8 ampere per millimeter square as a current density compared to rotor bar current density entering current density can be taken slightly more because uh, of uh, proper or more ventilating facilities available at the entering side. So area of the entering current now we have available. So the next step that is uh, to consider design dimension of entering. Particularly we are interested in uh, depth of the entering as shown in the figure. We have depth of the entering and at the same time we have thickness of the entering. Now area of the entering is available and based on the available area both the parameters can be easily calculated. So depth and thickness of the entering that is a cross sectional area of the entering is equal to depth and thickness of the entering. So area is equal to depth of the entering multiplied by thickness of the entering. Area of the entrings we have already calculated and based on this value we can easily able to calculate uh, depth as well as thickness of the entering. So this way we have designed in this video lecture we have studied how to design a rotor bars, how to calculate rotor bar current, how to calculate a rotor bar area. Rotor bar area is based on the current density we choose and rotor resistance depends on the rotor bar we have area, uh, rotor bar area we have selected and overall performance of the three phase induction motor that is uh, starting torque as well as uh, efficiency it is uh, purely depend on rotor resistance that all we have studied. So this part of video lecture in which we have designed a rotor bar as well as entering it is very important. So thank you for watching my video. Keep watching my video. We'll in our next lecture we will complete our uh, square cage uh, uh, rotor winding design and then from the uh, next lectures we will start uh, designing our slip ring type of uh, induction motor. So I stop here. Thank you very much.